Dalchin. Hello. Welcome to my home. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us, Dalchin. Are you ready to start the interview? Sure. So what's up? So you grew up in Birmingham, Alabama. You attended Spain Park High School. You went to college at the University of Alabama. What about Alabama or Birmingham has made you stay? Uh, family. Family? Yeah, I actually moved away and lived in Atlanta for a couple years. Um, mm -hmm. But when this job arose, um, it only made sense to come back where my family was. So obviously music has taken on a huge role in your life. What do you think ignited your passion for it? Um, I don't know, honestly. Uh, my mother did music mm -hmm. um, when she was growing up as well. We always had music playing in the house. I remember uh, playing the Thriller vinyl back in the day um, and just you know dancing around the living room. And then my first CD was actually a Tracy Lawrence uh, CD that you know my cousins got me hooked on um, when I was probably in my early teen years. So how did being a part of marching band in high school in, at Spain Park influence you now? Uh, probably more than I ever would have realized. Um, being in the marching band, uh, it gave me an opportunity to lead, to be around a large group of people, diverse people. Um, and so I was able to start building leadership skills that I use every single day now. Um, in large rehearsal settings. Um, and I started doing that at the age of 16. Where did you play in the band? Uh, what ensemble? Any, I don't know. Any kind of <laughs> um, in wind ensemble, I played the clarinet. Mm -hmm. In jazz band, I played the alto saxophone. And prior to being the drum major, I was a percussionist mm -hmm. on the field. What made you join show choir in high school? Um, actually, Mrs. Grady, um, the middle school director now, she was the choir director at Spain Park. And after being in the uh, musical orchestra, I actually auditioned to be on stage. She saw me. She said, hey, you sing and you dance. Why don't you try show choir? She wrote a letter, sat on my nightstand, and finally decided to do it. So how was your musical talent like refined? Like, so from high school to college, how was it refined in college? Um, what do you mean by refinement? Like, what practices and like, how did you get better? How was it harder? Practice. And I think that's just a good life lesson for anything. If you want to be better at anything, for you, interviewing, for the man behind the camera, doing that work. Um, the more you do it, the better you're going to become at it. Mm -hmm. So it's just a self-discipline that you have to have to want to be better at whatever you choose. Um, I always tell everyone here, it's not my goal to create professional singers and dancers. It's my goal to create professionals in whatever environment they choose, whether that be a lawyer, a doctor, dentist, whatever. Just be the best at that job. I've become such a better and more efficient worker because of him and show choir. Like I've learned about time management, about all that, and he's just really like drilled it into me about not being lazy and all those things. And I mean, he's really impacted my life of like, all you know, talent can only get you so far. A lot of it is skill, and he's definitely refined a lot of what I do. So you went from being a musical education ma major and band with like a focus on band, teaching band, but then you even switched to show choir. Mm -hmm. What made that change? Um, <coughs> honestly. Uh, Mrs. Grady. Uh, Mrs. Grady, when she was my teacher in high school, was just absolutely phenomenal and infectious. Um, and she brought out a true love of music that I had never experienced before. Um, and I think from that moment, I realized that I wanted to do something in that same capacity. You know, I went to college originally for business. Um, and just figured it'd be music business. Mm -hmm. And while in college, my freshman year, I actually did a bunch of freelance work and I would come back to high school and just help with the band and or the choir. Mm -hmm. And those teachers, especially Miss Grady said, I think you have a knack for this and you should maybe do delve into it, mm -hmm. so. So while at University of Alabama, you created Resonance, the first show choir there. What like prompted you to want to do that? Um, 
so I had a bunch of friends that from my time in show choir, they would choose to go to Auburn simply because Auburn had Auburn singers. And so I was like, well, there's no reason why Alabama couldn't have something like that. So through my experience at the business school, I had friends that were in the accounting program and marketing program, and we all kind of got together and thought, okay, let's just put this thing together. And we also had this massive um, tool, if you will, called Glee that had just started. And so everyone was kind of on that, that page. Um, and very, very quickly, we, we grew that program. And I will say it's probably the most beneficial thing that I did in all of college because it gave me the opportunity to make so many mistakes that you typically make in your first few years teaching, learning about pacing and whatnot, how, how to really control a room in a classroom. Mm -hmm. Because at that time, I mean, I was only 19 years old and I had people in the group that were in law school that were 21, 22. So how could I talk to someone that was older or direct someone that was older as well as someone that was my same age or slightly younger? They're very, the two show choirs are very similar in how he built them. He built them on a foundation of hard work, hard work ethic and excellence. Um, he does not put anything less than spectacular on stage. Mm -hmm. And he had that same mentality starting in college, which is why he built it to begin with, to one, get show choir at the University of Alabama in a sea of classical music, trying to prove to the higher ups that this has that same value that a concert choir does. You can do both and do them both really, really well. So he built that same foundation here as well. Then, he also has just created a community. I think that's the biggest thing that I took from Alabama that I've also seen created here. At Alabama, that's where I found my friends. That's where I found my core group of people in college was in residence in the show choir that he built because we were around each other constantly because we wanted to go to rehearsal to see our people and to work hard and to put on a great show. That's what he's created here. These kids love being around each other. They enjoy coming to rehearsals, sometimes. They enjoy coming to rehearsals because they want to see their friends and because they want to work hard to a common goal of putting on a great show and succeeding in their competition season. So I think, I think you really built similar, similar experiences. So can you kind of like walk me through the creative process of making a show choir performance, like competition ready? Like from when you get the idea of like what choir performance you want to do and then like when it's on stage um it's all a dream honestly um i typically ask the students inside the group um that are younger hey what would you like to do what kind of music do you like um and from there it kind of gives me a jumping off point and then i just i dream big um i actually said to some of our crew dads last night uh, as we were kind of figuring out this rail system that we're going to be using with the, the LED screens said, I'm sorry that I dream and that I can't back away from a dream. My favorite memory with Michael Zouchin is probably my freshman year. I remember I was sitting in his office and he asked me uh, if I liked the song that he was playing for me. It was Over the Love, Florence and the Machine from The Great Gatsby. It was wonderful. And I remember telling him, I want to sound exactly like this by my senior year. I want to sound, I want to be this good. And he was like, okay, fine. And I mean, it was, it was great. That was probably my favorite memory with him. It was so, it was so peaceful. So how did you begin your teaching career, like right out of college? How did I begin my teaching career? Um, well, there weren't many jobs here in Birmingham. And so I applied for them. Uh, one of them actually being Oak Mountain, did not get any of them. And so for everyone out there, if you don't get your first job, just keep trying, all right? Um, everything happens for a reason. I actually went to um, Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, I had some friends in Atlanta, and from my time in band, we had always looked up to Cobb County Schools. Um, they have really, really awesome programs. So I looked at some jobs, and sure enough, there was one, and you know, by the grace of God, I landed that one, and it was 
everything that I needed. Um, while I wanted to be here, it was so good. The environment of that school, it was an IB school. So culturally, it was extremely diverse, which was so wonderful to be around. Um, and it was just really, really awesome to get my sea legs under me um, before I came into a program like this one where I could really take it and, and go. Mm -hmm. yeah. So is it true that you taught an AP music theory class? Yes, I that? did. Um, that was actually in, in Georgia, in Marietta. I actually taught Ivy World Music, mm -hmm. which is um, advanced level music history. And I taught AP Music Theory, which was a two-year course. Um, and a lot of those kids took the same. You know, it was, it was on their IB track. Um, but it was, it was great. Um, those kids are really invested and want to know the, the science, if you will, the theory behind music. And it made me appreciate all of those theory classes in college that I had to take and study for hours and hours on end for. Yeah. You wanna go upstairs? Something people may not know about Zouchin is just that he, obviously he's passionate, but he's passionate about building you. It may, I, I know there's a, there's sort of a, a thing about Zouchin that he's, uh, always angry or that he's like a Hulk sort of person but um, everything that he's always doing is always to help he's always trying to make you the best you that you can be um, no matter if you are wanting to give up and quit or whether you are in there as much as you can what brought me to Oak Mountain um, a bunch of friends that uh, called me incessantly when the job opened <laughs> because honestly the job in Marietta was great um, loved every second of it loved those kids loved the community um, and actually you know have still been in touch with many of them uh, I actually went over there about two weeks ago and saw a family where are we now we are in the sound and lighting booth which has gotten upgrade after upgrade after upgrade um, since my time being here. We have a new soundboard, we have a new light board um, where everything can run digital, digitally. Um, but this honestly is your cockpit, if you will, for any kind of show. Um, all of your sound is handled right here, which we train students in my tech class to do as well. And then we have lighting here. So what were some of the challenges in building the choir into what it is now? Some of the challenges? Um, I think there's challenges in anything you do, but you have to persevere. Um, I mean, every day brings a challenge. Um, so to say that it's easier today than it was in 2013, you can't. It just depends on like, what your perspective is and what are you going to look at the negative or are you going to look at the positive? And how are you going to move forward? His balding is because of us. <laughs> it's totally our fault. We stress him out so much. So you also, on top of being a show choir director, you also work with Miss Strickland on the musical whenever we do have a musical. What's it like working with musical theater versus show choir performances? I love it. So it's practically the same thing. Um, it's honestly one of our favorite things that we get to do. And when I say we, I'm definitely speaking for myself and Dr. Bender because we've actually had that discussion. Um, we, he loves playing in the pit. I love conducting in the pit. Uh, it kind of takes me back to my band days. Um, and then when, you know, getting to work with the actors and singers, it, it just blends all of our worlds together very nicely. Uh, <clears throat> favorite memory of, of, of Zalchin probably uh, he and I were doing a production here um, in 20, the, the winter of 2014 um, of Shrek, the musical. And uh, it was a, a really big show. We had rented costumes. We had, we had gone so far as to paint the stage in the PAC green to look like a swamp. And uh, so the, the whole production was over the top. Uh, I, I play piano, so I've always wanted to play in the orchestra pit, and Zouchin conducts our orchestra pits for the musicals. 
some of the best memories I have with him are spending weeks in that tiny little orchestra pit in the Performing Arts Center. So you're known for your tough love teaching style and expecting the absolute best of your students. Who or where did you draw your teaching style from? Um, probably it's a mixture of my mother, Miss mm -hmm. um, Grady, and Dr. Ratledge. Um, Mrs. Grady obviously was my high school teacher, now currently at the middle school. My mother, of course my mother, um, and Dr. Ratledge um, in terms of his musicianship and what he expected of us at, in a rehearsal. So with the new music building being built, what are you most excited for it, for it to be, for it to give your students? Um, a space that we can adequately fit in, hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, currently we just once you put bodies and the risers and everything in the space, you almost can't move. Um, and the only time that we ever can build our full productions is if we're in here on the stage. Mm -hmm. And so uh, hopefully we will be able to do all of that in our current building. So, uh, or in our, in our new building, we'll have a space that the ceilings are tall enough and the, the room is wide enough that we can have riser set up, we can do all of the lighting, the paneling, um, and also have adequate storage because I'm sorry math teachers, during first period, um, it's probably us you hear in the attic rumbling through things, and we're hopefully going to be able to get some of that stuff out of there so that we can store it in our new facility. Do you need goals or next amb ambitions for the show choir next year or coming up this year? Any goals, our goal is always to do, um, our goal is to always be the best that we can be. Um, and I've said here a lot recently to the kids, like, I'm not giving up on you, you don't give up on me. We always get tired, we get, you know, worn down. That's just human nature and human life. So, um, but if we all want to achieve a common goal, the world's a really simple place. We all just decide on one thing. How are we gonna get to that one thing? And we make that decision. Do you have any advice for someone wanting to try out for show choir or for crew? Um, just come out. Like, the, it does not, we, every year in terms of singers and dancers, we have people that say, oh, I can't do that. Because what they see is the final product. They don't see August. They see, um, the the product after all the months of rehearsal and what they have to realize is that I will coach them to that spot N everyone on that stage did not walk in doing the things that they're doing now um, but they were coached to that spot so if you have a love for music or a love for dance um, then audition right don't be scared um, I like a hard worker over a talent, talented person any day, right? Because a hard worker is going to go far. Um, and for crew, same thing, dedication, drive, um, a willingness to learn, and a positive attitude and calmness. I mean, straight up, I wouldn't be here. I would not, I probably wouldn't be, I for sure wouldn't be at Oak Mountain but I definitely would not be teaching if it weren't for him. I would probably be sad behind a computer somewhere or doing nursing or something else, something helping people, yes, but I would not be in music, which is where my true passion lies, teaching music and empowering people to love music. No, I mean, look, this is my life, y'all, so, um, Typically, if you can't find me in that room over there, you'll find me in this one doing something to entertain people. And I think that's what everyone wants in this world, just to be entertained.